All right, so what is solitude monitoring? So here's the excerpt of the solitude quality from the Wilderness Act. And I think what's important to remember is that wilderness is not solely a recreation space. It's, and then the solitude, where solitude monitoring comes into play is that we use this data to determine, or wilderness managers use this data to determine whether the USFS is achieving outstanding opportunities for solitude. And then the solitude monitoring itself is supposed to mimic what a visitor's experience would be at this area and how much solitude they would achieve in a visit. So if you look at this picture from the Cohutta Wilderness, this is a really popular spot, Jack's River Falls on a Saturday. So what uh, the data that we would collect in this moment would tell us is that on Saturdays at whatever time of year uh, and day of, the, day of the week this is, you would not be probably likely to achieve solitude here because of all the because of how popular this area is. So moving on. So why is it valuable? So this is some data that is pulled from the locations that we will be monitoring. So we have the locations of the AT down here, Ridge Mountain, Trey Mountain, etc. And you see this big red line. This is Ravencliffs Falls on a weekend. So what the, our data is going to tell us, it's gonna track trends over time. This data along with recreation data, recre uh, invasive species surveys, help build a picture of the state of the wilderness. If visitation becomes too high, efforts will be made to protect the land. And the Forest Service needs data over time to back their management decisions internally and with the public. And of course, we know human impact is one of the greatest threats to the wilderness, along with invasive species from globalization and climate change. Speaking of management actions, this is an image of Ravencliffs Falls. That's where that big spike was. So management action has been taken in part from the solitude monitoring data that's already been done. And you can see in the background here, there is a green, uh, uh, what would you call it? One of those slots where you can put the, the money in and that's paying for parking. And that's to help protect the wilderness. And along with that, there's also the options to for public education and recre recommendations, permit systems, paying for parking, like we said, designated campsites, and even trail closure or reroutes. Okay, so the performing solitude monitoring in the field itself, this is kind of like a narrative that you can read over and help you imagine physically what a solitude monitoring session would look like um, at any given day. So the first you would arrive at the trailhead. Sometimes the wilderness boundary is right there at the trailhead. Sometimes it is a hike. That's something you'll need to be uh, pre-planned for. And then once you have crossed into the wilderness, you'll check in on your survey to mark the time. And then you'll be expected to hike two hours into the wilderness and then turn around, hike two hours back, and that will be totaling a minimum of four hour monitoring session within the wilderness area. And then while you're out there in those four hours, you'll be counting at anyone you see on the from the trail, including people camping, swimming, fishing, hunting. Um, once the monitoring ends, you'll check out when you leave the wilderness boundary. And again, you'll pull up your survey and check out to mark the time. Okay. And just some added details about monitoring. 
monitoring, the areas you'll be monitoring will be specific pre-designated areas, trails. Um, these are defined and picked based on popularity, like that Ravencliffs Falls Trail, and they're used over time for consistency. So the same ones to track trends over time. And then while you're counting visitors, if you see the same people, you can count them again if if at least 15 minutes has elapsed since you saw slash counted them. This may cause you to count them multiple times. That's completely okay. And we'll get more into this uh, later when we show you, run through some examples. All right, so more details for scheduling the monitoring sessions. There is a specific time of year for monitoring, and that is June through October. And the goal here is to reflect summer and fall peak usages. And then smaller than that is the day of the week. There needs to, so each area is, needs to have 10 monitoring sessions. Five of those need to be on weekdays and five of those need to be on weekends. And that can also include a holiday. And then for time of day, it is pref ideally it'd be between 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The usual time is when there would be the most people there, um, unless an area justifies other times. More information about that is days cannot be consecutive in the same area. So you can't go on a Friday and monitor Ravencliffs Falls and then on Saturday a monitor so like a weekday and a weekend you're trying to get to uh, in two days in the same area no you have to space them out at least one one day spaced and then here is a list of the one two three four federal holidays that could be considered weekends in that June through October time period <laughs> 